Steph is the least spooky player in the NBA, but he still managed to be the king of Halloween. In this video, we will look at his ridiculous performance in 2015 and answer the burning question, what is the Halloween game anyway? Many great NBA games have been held on Halloween, which traditionally falls around the beginning of the basketball season. Easily the most important thing to ever happen on this day was the debut of the first African-American player in league history. On October 31, 1950, Earl Lloyd debuted with the Washington Capitals, finally desegregating professional basketball three years after the MLB had done the same. For a while, the season started after Halloween, and basketball sorely missed the spooky fixture. But since the late 1990s, it has become an inseparable part of the calendar, and the NBA promotes it with typical pumpkin and skeleton decor. However, they don't make as big a deal out of it as they do of Christmas. We think that is a real shame. But in the age of social media, who needs the league and the networks? In the olden days, players were too macho to wear costumes. But now they compete over who can wear more elaborate items. Michael Jordan blazed the trail with his 1992 costume as a knitting granny. Then in 2015, LeBron paid tribute to Prince and we know the best is yet to come. But we're here to discuss the greatest Halloween performance of all time. Curry has never had a bad season, to be honest, but in 2015, he was at his absolute best. The deadly shooter averaged 30.1 points, 6.7 assists, and 5.4 rebounds per game on his way to a second straight MVP award. But even by those high standards, his 53 points on 17 of 27 shooting, including 814 from downtown, was ridiculous. The New Orleans Pelicans were the unfortunate victims. When they met, Anthony Davis and the Pelicans were already suffering from shell shock after Steph had hit them for 40 points on opening day. But that was just a preparation for the next matchup four days later. Yes, Steph scored 93 points against New Orleans within four days. Not bad. Steph had all his usual moves that night, including some intense penetrations and devastating mid-range jumpers. But, even by his standards, it was a remarkable night for three-point shooting. In some cases, the MVP didn't even bother to steady himself and aim. In others, Steph was dodging arms to the face during the delivery. At one point in the third quarter, Curry fell into the seats while making a shot from downtown. He hit it, of course. Then, I did a little dance on the floor. The baby-faced assassin wasn't just scoring, either. However, he did plenty of that. Steph also passed for nine assists and took down four rebounds. Even more amazingly, he was probably the best defensive performer of the night. Curry led the game with four steals, leading to intense breakaway attacks, like the one in the third quarter, which saw Steph go coast to coast for an embarrassingly easy layup. Indeed, during that quarter, a shift occurred in the way the Pelicans were guarding the superstar. Gone were the close body checks and hands waved in the face. Instead, a group of demoralized New Orleans players looked more like traffic cones than professional athletes as Curry toyed with them relentlessly. Of course, we all know Curry can get a bit cocky, and that All Hallows' Eve was no exception. After hearing Pelican's assistant coach Darren Ehrman yell out defensive orders, Steph scored one of his incredible baskets and ran to Ehrman to taunt him. He later explained, I shot it and made it, and I yelled that terminology back to him. The Pelicans shouldn't have been surprised. Steph has always loved big occasions, and Halloween is no exception. In 2013, he engaged in a ridiculous shootout with Chris Paul on this spooky night. However, at that time, the Warriors and Curry were on the losing side. CP3 hit 42 to Steph's 39 as the Clippers won 126-115. I guess you could say Steph's performance haunted the Pelicans. Sorry, but you didn't expect to have no dad jokes in this clip, right? Probably the second greatest Halloween performance, and definitely more surprising than the one Steph put in, is Derrick Rose's phenomenal showing on Halloween 2018. 
Rose was the 2011 MVP and one of the best players in the game until injuries limited his efficiency. But that night, Derek could still ball with the best, scoring 50 points against the Jazz. Although he is best known for an incredible stretch with the Bulls that shattered his previous high of 42 points set for Chicago. After that astonishing performance, an emotional Rose said, This means everything, man. I work my ass off. Another phenomenal 50-point performance occurred in Japan. At one point, the NBA was trying out games in the land of the rising sun for marketing purposes. In 2003, the last year the NBA played regularly in Japan, Richard Lewis had a career night for Seattle. The Sonics were without Ray Allen, their biggest star. But Lewis filled his shoes and then some, making 18 of 25 shots, taking 8 rebounds and passing for 4 assists. But the most incredible Halloween performance of all belongs to Manu Ginobili, the Argentine all-star who played for the San Antonio Spurs. In 2009, a bat symbolically decided to fly onto the court during the spooky event. Ginobili did not hesitate and swatted the bat, knocking it onto the floor with impressive accuracy. It does not get more Halloween than killing a bat in front of a roaring crowd. Manu posted on Facebook, as many of you already know, it wasn't a great idea. Not only because bats are a great part of the ecosystem, but also because some carry rabies, which is an incurable disease. That's why I had to get vaccinated today, and it wasn't just one shot. We are also glad to report that the bat survived its encounter with Manu. That is just the tip of the iceberg on Halloween basketball. Steph's performance was easily the greatest, but there has been so much great ball played on All Hallows' Eve. But we certainly hope to see more bats involved.